name is Scott Stevens. I uh, was a television weatherman for 20 years. These chemtrails are absolutely required to impact whatever weather event they were designing. And the trails were an absolute necessary ingredient for them to achieve their weather modification goals. Chemtrails are a key element in the whole thing because they're obviously a way of uh, putting a highly reflective material into the atmosphere. With cloud seeding, the cooling will be achieved by making clouds reflect a bit more sunlight back to space than they would otherwise, and less sunlight reaching the surface would tend to cool the planet. So let's say we were doing geoengineering because we wanted to make uh, the weather a little bit better. The more we see these trails in the sky, the less rain we get. Virtually all scientific data, even from the proponents of geoengineering, state clearly saturating the atmosphere with particulates will create drought. Much has been made of this issue of damage from precipitation. If the issue is understanding the climatic response, which was I think most of where this was going, that is exactly where the precipitation gets higher or lower. There will be monsoon failures during that period, there will be huge hurricanes. It's likely to cause some damage in some places. The global studies indicate there will be some impact on precipitation patterns and obviously there's a lot more opportunity for work in that area. Just seeding can be pretty effective for the clouds we explored, but the interactions between seeding and precipitation in the form of drizzle are really complex. So we're finding the aerosols, the metal particulates, the weather engineering, whether it's scalar, ionic, or organ, or the chi of the atmosphere, all of those can be used and, and leveraged to create weather events that are several standard deviations or outside what would be typically normal. Before jumping on the chemtrail bandwagon was I needed a motive. Without a motive, you can't say what they're doing and why they're doing it. You have to have a motive. Uh, what other derivatives are products that uh, commercial hedgers would use, such as an insurance company or an energy company, to hedge risk that's associated with weather? Precipitation or a hurricane or general heating days is what they're basically called. Certain temperatures or you know higher temperatures are going to associate with um, more energy, so they're going to want to hedge that risk. If you can structure a product where you say, "I'm going to buy insurance against it raining more than 10 inches in this area," if my risk is say like say a million dollars, but I'm insuring for 10 million dollars, then I can make it rain and collect the premium on the 10 million. Well, of course. So the agenda was drought. The agenda was to kill the storm, at least in that one particular spot. You're reducing the food security of people through deploying these kinds of approaches that potentially two billion people could have their food disrupted by such interventions. It affects farmers by their ability to plan what they're going to be growing. You see a tremendous and significant loss of property and uh, crop production. Uh, many times this will cause farms to go out of business. And when farmers go out of business, they usually have to sell. And then if there's somebody waiting in the wings to buy their land and then uh, turn that uh, land over to the production of genetically modified crops, you can see where there would be kind of a strategic advantage there. The fact that it's cheap isn't necessarily a good thing at all, as I'll come to in a second. The fact that it's cheap is part of the whole hard problem of governance. The fact that it's cheap means any small state or, or even conceivably individuals could do this, and that is a very dangerous thing. There's only probably under $10 million per year and maybe far less than that being spent on geoengineering research. Um, it's a mix of a handful of government grants and some private money, including support uh, from Bill Gates. There is a line of research on what's called geoengineering. The climate getting worse means that many years their crops won't grow. There'll be too much rain, not enough rain. Uh, things will change in ways that their fragile environment simply can't support. Bill Gates invests in geoengineering and he profits from the destruction through his investment in Monsanto. Monsanto is coming in and they're saying, we have a solution for your problems. Basically, if you control the weather and the seed source, you essentially control all food production. You can kill a storm in place. That's easy to do with HARP. You just change the polarization, you change the ionization of the atmosphere, and the storm will fall apart. HARP is actually an acronym for High Altitude Active Aurora Research Program. And it, uh, in the patents for the HARP system, it describes what is uh, detailed as ionospheric heating. It creates situations where crops are either uh, so severely flooded that they're destroyed. And so it's very easy to 
add those particulates of aluminum, barium, and whatever else they want to put in there, then as you add heat to that, those particulates then radiate the heat into the atmosphere and it warms. Let's just say the storms can develop more violently, more quickly, um, in places that are not necessarily as uh, where you would expect them to be. We have altered weather patterns that are also stated as consequences of geoengineering. Since these global weather modification programs appear to have been ramped up so radically in the last decade, our, our weather here has changed unimaginably. And we've got technologies available to us now that can do, you know, continent-sized uh, projects. Is all of the persistent trails behind it. So that tells me, Michael, that they are engineering this storm to a great degree. Now all of this stuff is chemtrail debris or chemtrail clouds that had been laid down over Utah and over, over southern Colorado earlier in the day. What we see in the sky matches virtually all geoengineering patents. The fact that hundreds of lab tests taken from all over the globe match exactly the ingredients stated in geoengineering patents as primary elements. But not very much. And there's certainly uncertainty about how bad those effects will be, but they will be extremely bad. One of the most hardy brush forms known, the manzanita, and it, it looks like it's been hit with insecticide. And we're seeing this throughout the ecosystem. And there's virtually no growth, and we see whole plants, whole mature plants, 50, 60, 70 year old, almost trees die out for no reason whatsoever that, that we can find other than the contaminated soils. So if it's in the rain, it's in the soil. And now we see incredibly hardy organisms dying uh, for no other cause that we can find other than the contamination in our rain from these aerosol operations. And so you get ecosystem collapses. And if you control the weather, you're going to control the planet. It's that simple. Since the release of What in the World Are They Spraying, millions of people have woken up to these crimes against nature and humanity. We believe the next prudent step, not only in waking, but also activating millions of more people and moving closer towards holding the governments and corporations responsible accountable, is addressing the weather control aspect of these damaging programs. We can't do it alone and we need your support. This entire production will be funded by private donations and pre-orders. So see the website right at the bottom of your screen and see how you can get involved in bringing this message out to millions of people. The work we're doing will provide cover for others to come out. And I'm most interested in whistleblowers.